on Thursday, we started out with 16 teams. Since then, we've been cut down to 12. Two teams have gone forward and they will be playing in Lanxess Arena for $1 million and two have been sent home with nothing. Six more spots called, six more teams will be going to the major. So let's find out who they are. And of course, yet again, ladies and gentlemen, Jin Dobre Katowice. Four days it has been. This would be the last one, of course. Three have seen us go through a grueling process of eliminating these teams and finding out who will be in the upper echelon to play for the major. Today, we have a lot of teams that are one and two and some teams that are two and one. Six remain at the end of this, or well, 12 remain, so I say, but six we're going on to the major. Let's not waste too much time in getting into this one. Let's start to bring some teams up on the stage. Definitely a dark horse, definitely an underdog. Nobody really thought they would perform, but they're still here and they're still playing for their spot at Lang says, it is Splice. And you can expect definitely a loud and proud showing from these guys as well. They said, I spoke to Dave, you said, we don't win a lot, but when we do, we get excited. It was a tough start for them, of course, going up against Hellraisers, and they did fall on Cobblestone, but turning it around just after against the Renegades, playing the mental game and outlasting them in a 16-14 show. Unfortunately for them, they had to go up against Envy later on, who quickly took them to task, but they're still here and they're still fighting, and that, at this stage, is all that matters. But their opponents, of course, from right across the world, who've had some tough matchups themselves, are showing some great individual skill and ag aggressive, impressive play style. Welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Tyloo! Expectations were high for Tyloo, of course, coming off an incredible performance at the DreamHack Masters in Malmo. They went up against G2 in their first game, and after a good start, they did fall apart on their T side on catch. They did, however, repair this, and their next game was an incredible performance over the Immortals, outlasting them, and of course, getting passionate and loud and beating them here on the main stage. They did unfortunately go on to lose their next game against Cloud9, who showed a lot of mental fiber and stamina to beat them out on that map. But now, they will be going up against Splice. It's do or die here, win this game, and they'll have a chance still to win one more and play for the Major. But the most interesting part about both these two teams is that, respectively, they've only played the one map this week. Splice have played three maps on Cobblestone, and of course, Tyloo have played three maps on Cash. One, at least one of these teams is going to have to demonstrate to us the depth of their map pool and maybe even go out of their comfort zone to clinch a win here. But they'd better be ready because there's no going back from this point. Let's pass it back over to the desk for Alex and co to give us more insight into this very exciting matchup. Great start, Mitch. Thanks very much. It just kind of set the scene so perfectly that we are going to be talking about, well, first, Cash Cobble. Starting with Tyloo and their cash performances, actually going to an interview from their opponents, their adversaries G2. Uh, when interviewed, in fact, no, excuse me, it was uh, nothing talking about their loss versus G2. And he said that actually their T side was rather one dimensional. It was just a lot of kind of A hits, B hits, and very little mid control. That's what it is, yeah. And then well, upon review, you look at their CT side, it's, it, it does, of course, in contrast, look great. But the fact that Tyloo struggle on a map that they, you know, they've been managing to battle for the veto three times in a row, you can't help but wonder, you know, where do the weaknesses lie amongst their map pool elsewhere? Is it, why are they leaning to cash so heavily? I, I don't think necessarily think it's them leaning. They have their, you know, usual vetoes for for every map so far. They've been pretty consistent about it. They've you know trained three times, nuke three times, uh, and uh, dust you twice. Yep. So, you know, they, they have preferences, obviously, but it's more or less teams allowing them to get cash. And if it's a map they've felt comfortable uh, on, which they should be, uh, especially after that uh, second game they had versus Immortals, then, you know, it's perfectly fine for them to have another start. It's not, there's no real shame in losing to Cloud9 either. 
on that map. Actually, usually they've been picking up a lot of rounds on T-Set Cash. So yeah. I, the thing is, the teams are reading up on, on the way they play. Like, they haven't been able to uh, renew their game style at all, really, from uh, previous months. Mm. So that's, I think, they're a bit of an issue. Yeah. Um, but it is, the, like I said earlier, it's the, just the depth in their, their skill level with these players that is just immense. And when you add up the uh, explosive playstyle they have, it can be hot to handle. Yeah, no, I do, I do want to, uh, I know this could be a bit of a silly question, but we do use the word explosive a lot, this kind of explosive playstyle to Tai Lu. If you had to put into words what an explosive playstyle is, is it just quick takes? Is it what, what, what would you say defines an explosive style? Basically, you try to gain control like very early on in the first 30 okay. seconds, like maybe flashing through a smoke. For example, on a cache, you, you go towards your B bomb site, you try to take it over checkers right, right away. You just need to smoke the choke point or the door into B. You just basically flash in there, you flash in the checkers, you take that part of the map over, you try to get an early entry kill, and then maybe just run with that. Kind of do, do everything with gusto. Gusto. Yeah, gusto. <laughs> I like it. That's a word I probably haven't heard in about five years, so I appreciate that one. Uh, moving away from Tai Lu and into their opponents, Splice for a second, let's meet those boys. The roster that undoubtedly have come into every game here as the underdog, but have already, as Mitch has already touched on, picked up that win. And now Jason, Arya, Abe, Professor Chaos, and Davey do sit upon, upon the chopping block. Now, we already framed this as being an, an underdog story for Splice, and I don't think I want to really hammer that home too much more, especially when you consider what was said in the interview with Happy, just saying, in the, with all due respect, that was a very easy game. This is what this is what we're left with. A team that actually has players currently look, you know, pursuing other roles within the scene. Professor, Professor Chaos is who I'm trying to highlight here, Halvor. Yeah, no, he has already said that he's not he's not actually too confident in his own individual ability within the game, so he wants to look at that that coaching role uh, for other teams. And I, that's probably not the best confidence builder if you want to build hype around Splice going into this game. But uh, <laughs> Well, um, alongside that, they really didn't have a roster or any I, practice. To be, yeah. honest, to be honest with you, I mean, they did say, what, when uh, they were asked in an interview, what have you guys been doing the past few months because we haven't seen you compete? What have you been practicing? What, what the heck have you guys been practicing? Because they obviously yeah. haven't become that organized. You know, they, don't, they, they keep asking each other if you, if you do the connectors, smoking cobblestone, things like that. Yeah. It's kind of silly when, when you're coming in leading up to a major qualifier. And let's not forget that they're, they're still looking for you know, replacement players. I know that Summit was you know, considered for a while. They were you know, throwing offers. <laughs> at him after his performance in Austin. Freakazoid stepped in for a while. Like They are still looking for uh, to rejuvenate their roster, but the maps are up, and we'll talk about that as well. And uh, you it's said already it's going to be pretty self-explanatory at the start here. Uh, yeah, Splice has been banning out Dust2 and Cash pretty much all tournament. They've banned out Mirage twice as well. And uh, well, train Tyloo's ordinary ban. Uh, Cobblestone is a, is a <laughs> bit of a new one, but obviously Splice has only played Cobblestone, so it makes sense for them. And I'm actually expecting Cash to go out as it's well. Gone. It's, it's gone. gone. It's gone already. Yeah. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that we're going to see our first overpass game throughout it's the tournament. I think it's, it's very out. likely, actually. Wait. It's already out. Oh, wow. I need, okay, so Halvor, I, need to get, I need to get glasses. What, what people <laughs> don't know about Halvor is as soon as he gets into the There's green room, he puts on like... Nuke and Mirage. I put on thick thick binoculars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to get Mirage here. Okay, so we are still not going to see our first overpass game, but, but it's funny that the first ban from Splice was just taking that cash away from Tai Lu, and Tai Lu in turn removing the cobble from Splice. So both of them are going to be playing a new map, and you called it, gents. No nuke. Tai Lu were given the choice, and so if anyone was wondering whether they had put in the time, put in that, that secret work Hellraiser style on nuke, it's not to be for the Chinese. Yeah, and, and uh, for Tai Lu, I think they're pretty happy with this uh, mm. with this video, actually. They played a lot of Mirage. Uh, I think they played it a ton during the... Uh, well, I guess the, their local leagues um, can't, yeah. can't come up with that or can't recall the name right now. But I think it's the, the age bot imitational or something yeah. like that. I but mean, they played it in Malmo. Yeah, they did that as well. Obviously, that's a, a bit far, uh, further away uh, in time, but it's still a map that they've played uh, quite a bit. And I think, you know, seeing how Splice have banded out twice already in this matchup, they'd, it's probably not something to feel extremely confident on. They, they, I don't think there was a map pool in the world that would favor Splice anyway. So, I mean, uh, it's, it's, I guess, it's, maybe Cobble. <laughs> that's the one option, yeah. That's what I was thinking about. But obviously, if you're Tylo, you don't just, why would you get that out there? Why would and you give it out there? You've already got an example of Envy playing Cobble and destroying Splice. Yeah. So maybe all we'd have to see is Tylo by 4 Mac 10s and an AK, and they'd have no problems. Just take a leaf out of Devil's Book. <laughs> Night uh, round is live, though. That does mean that we are nearly ready for our first game here of our final day at the offline qualifiers. Gents, you know what? I'm, I, I was, I'm not even. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to bother wasting the breath to ask you for predictions. It does seem like once again, Splice will be the underdogs in this one. 
But Should I do want to quickly... Should we just go by the dive round? I wins? I'd like... I'd just do player to watch instead. I always find that quite interesting if you could justify your answer as well. I mean, I, I could see Splice being okay in a map, that Puggy style map where you can just basically use your individual skill. But a map like Mirage, you need a lot of coordination on each side. Even on CT side as well. You need to be playing off each other really well to be able to pick up rounds. So it's just something I don't see as being a thing for them. Uh, and so it's, it's just impossible to say yeah. that they would have much of a chance here. Again, it's for me, it's going to be the same answer I gave well, previously uh, in the tournament when we saw Spice. The, the player to watch is Davey, and he's pretty much yeah. just making a good showcase for himself, uh, making himself uh, you know, a valuable asset in the future if anybody else might want to pick yeah. him up. Because I, you know, given the answers we've heard from Spice himself, you know, someone looking into coaching and people not being 100% committed, you'd expect this team to not go that much further as the same five. So yeah. for Davey, this is a bit of an opportunity for him to basically showcase his skills. skills. So. And uh, <laughs> if we're gonna, uh, if we're gonna go with Tai Lu, a player to watch there, I think Fancy okay. uh, is, a, is a pretty good go with it. All right, so eyes on Fancy and eyes on Tai Lu. It does seem like the desk here has a little bit of doubt on Splice, but it's an elimination match. Either the Chinese side or the North Americans are going home empty-handed, and the others will take a step closer to that major. Your casters are ready, and it is Mirage between Splice and Tai Lu. Let's get into it. Thank you, Alex, and I am so <laughs> excited to see a map other than Cash and Cobble for these two teams. And Mirage sounds fantastic to me. We saw a bit of what Tyloo can bring. I think it was during, was it the Kesper event, I think, against Renegade, showing a little bit of potential there, beating out Renegade several times. And Splice, I don't think there will be slouches on this one if they've gone through the veto to get to this point. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird with Splice because they used to play it a little bit in more domestic matchups, but here's the thing, a lot of their victories on this map, if you look at it, I think they're like a 12-11 record on it right now, but they get a lot of victories uh, against teams that are like much lesser known in North America, like in like RGN matches and whatnot mm -hmm. there, where it's, you know, it's not going to be the biggest challenge for them to go up against. When they went to SIBO, they kind of ditched it after there because they lost it twice, I think once to Virtus Pro and another one to another North American team that was there. And ever since then, we haven't seen it played competitively since. So it's been quite a long time since Splice have actually uh, gone to for this map in a competitive matchup. All right, here we go. So Splice could be on the T side, Tyloo on the CT side. And already that creativity that we were loving from Tyloo on their CT side on cash seems to have found its way here into Mirage. The three stack instantly towards B with quite a dash of aggression. Davey's got a lot of trouble coming his way, but he's got Julie. So, you know, what's better than one pistol? Two. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> The rest of Splice now moving themselves out onto the A-bomb site. Captain Mo, actually the first one there, and somebody he is trying to take down A, but he's going to get dinked down to 5 HP, and he's stuck in the corner. Arya just rushing right up is going to be able to take him down, and just like that, now the guys from Splice take control of the A-bomb site. They have to play retake here, Tyloo, and they're being pretty quick on the trigger, and they're going to go straight for this. Fancy's coming in, but it's DD to catch out Arya, and that's the big difference maker here. But Davey on the rotate with A-bomb is planted pretty well for them, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the plant for short. So again, they definitely can contest it. The Diffuse is coming in right now. The smoke is down. And with a couple of seconds left, the Meat Shield came in from Fancy there. In the end, it was Mo to get killed, but it doesn't matter. Bomb Diffuse, well played out by Tai Lu, but a close one there for Splice, and they still got a plant. Rather scrappy round, if we're completely honest. There Very are a lot scrappy. of mistakes being made, and at the end, Splice, I don't even think they knew that that bomb was being diffused. So the chaos amongst it, they do sneak it in there, and Abe's just not able to close out, unfortunately. So going into this next round, Splice, look at this buy from them. They're going all in on this. We can see AKs coming out now on the second round force up. They're going to do the raid boss buy on both Davey and Jason R. Whereas Abe, Ari, and Professor Chaos are just going to bring Tech 9 to the party. They are angry. They want to get right back into this match. Can't blame them. That must have been incredibly frustrating. They had such a chance at it. It was a couple of shots away from working. But somebody should be the one waiting here. And he had a massive game before on cash. Or pick any cash game you want, I guess. But here you go. As said, they've invested. They're going for the full in play. Those two rifles have to come into some sort of use. They trade out effectively at this point. But Tyloo know where Splice are going, and they're going to get positioned for this. But Professor Chaos could have done some damage. He gets caught up on short, but still, Splice do have the sight. The AKs are also up and rolling, but the problem is they're not covering their How? bomb planter. Captain Mo just walks right out from market. Jason R trading it out, and he's got an opponent flash, but he runs into bullets. Has to go for the reload there. Everything's in the hands of Davey. He's picked up one more kill. A minute left on the clock, so plenty of time to plant this bomb, but he doesn't feel secure planting it here on the B bomb site with DD possibly being so close. So he's going to run it over to the A site instead. And with DD taking a long time to navigate through these apartments here, he should have plenty of time to get onto the A site and plant this safely. And now it's going to become a problem for DD because not only is he so far away from the action, but he's got no kit either. Yeah, this this might be a little bit of a get as close as you can, see how you feel about it, and consider backing away. Davy though, going for a bit of a, I guess a, 
Interesting spot. He could have repositioned maybe to ram, taken, taken any angle he wanted. He, of course, didn't know how far away Didi was. And actually, Didi's one of the highlight players against the games when they played against Renegade. So this could be a possibility. He's certainly looking for it, but you noted this before. No kit, so time is of the essence. And he's not expecting Davey here. He's looking towards ramp where that bomb's pretty much planted for. Didi's tried it. He's seen nothing out of it. It's time to get out of there. Keep hold of the M4. Keep hold of the Tech 9. Davey's going to back away. <laughs> <laughs> and you're hearing him already, Splice! <laughs> these guys, man, these guys are so hyped up. I love that. All right, so 1-1 one, one now. Splice, settle the score again. The GOAT. It's back. That's Abe for you. But is that actually Abe? Yeah, that's Abe. That's 100% Abe. Jesus. That's, he probably has the most identifiable screen out of, uh, but, out of all of them. But let's go back to that round as well. How the hell did Splice even let? It was Captain Mo who just walked out from Kitchen. That I don't know how that can happen when someone's just planting the bomb there. No one was expecting the push, I guess, but still, that's something that might be an issue later on if they're not you know, that sharp or that on point here. But again, Splice will have such an upper hand in this round. They do have a lot of rifles, one Mac-10 with Davey, but on the other side, a big force back into this for Tyloo. The players that had the uh, the players that had the lighter investments in that round, unfortunately, found themselves just outmatched a lot of the time, but thankfully, the, the AK investments ended up paying on huge dividends. Davey, specifically, was able to work pretty well there, but heading into the third round now, we can see Splice taking some good control over here, out in the middle. Tyloo, not really going to be ones to contest that, at least initially. And this actually harks back to a lot of the things they were doing on the half in this side, too. They were also, in the middle area of that map, weren't really proactive on defending. They did let them get control and then tried to just prevent them from getting into the sites to begin with. We can see Attacker and Davey going to be having a bit of a standoff right now. He's waiting for Davey to get aggressive, but he backs away just when he moves to the position he was watching. And Attacker knows he's here, so... Davey's the one who has to find out the information. You can assume there'll be someone close by, but you don't know the angle. So attacker, going to come out on top on that. They still have those two players very much dedicated towards B. And bearing in mind that Didi's the one with the rifle, this could get deadly. What is that, Professor Chaos? Attacker's gone and ripped him apart. Now 5v3. The B side's looking even more deadly. Attacker's en route, and you've still got those two players dedicated to their post. DD being one of them, finds the first, and just well to the second, leaving just one man standing. And what a waste from Splice. They had such an opportunity, so much room. But in the end, it looked as though they had just enough rope to hang themselves with in that round. And Tyloo now bouncing back. Going to cost some issues for Splice here since the investment was so heavy on the second round. There was definitely no time for them to build up any semblance of a bank at all. And I don't really think they're going to be able to justify going for another big one here. Going to have to save up and actually probably is going to end up being double save territory now because the losing bonus has been reset. And players like Arya are down at about 1k. So if they force up on the fifth round, there's going to be quite a few crucial things missing from the buy. So Tyloo actually might have just secured a really good hold because of that. Yeah, and I love the adaption again on the CT side. These guys, this is what we liked on Cash, was the fact that they could actually really be influential in the way they played. But taking a great deal of damage here, Tyloo, maybe overextending, and this could be punishment. Splice is not gonna let that slip, and that's perfect. Make the most of this, do some damage. Now they're down to two. Those Deagles, well, the Deagles, should I say, not gonna be as effective at this point as already I think Tyloo are responding accordingly. Suddenly becoming a little more humble here, having to reset the fight off. They really did get punished. And Fancy moving himself into the connector. Gonna try to cut off any more momentum that Splice may be able to gain towards the site. A little bit cautious in the event of these players falling back because DD should have been able to get some of this intel too, but it's definitely not going to be the case. Everybody from Splice, the two that are still left anyway, posturing up now to try and force their way into the B-bomb so that you can see Professor Chaos trying to inch his way past connector there, making sure he doesn't get cut off. It's dark room, he's gotta be careful of that. He doesn't even check it. DD finds the kill for free against Professor Chaos, and now for Davey. As they move in, Didi spots oh. it, but there's a good shot from Davey moving in, but I think he's a little bit too quick with it. However, the initial mess up there comes in from somebody. He is able to recover, though, and take down Davey. That got a little bit scary there. Um, good damage from Splice, considering they started this out with a very low buy, but you mentioned at the start that money after the kind of back and forth, not being able to kind of go all the way through with the reset, they're going to be down pretty low here. So we are actually seeing the Tech 9 buy up. Um, going straight back in on this one. And, well, somebody... There isn't any head armor here, so he can do masses of damage, and I'm wondering where he's going to place himself. It looks like they tried to go for a, <laughs> a push through window, but all got caught up by uh, by murder hole. So they're going to push mid, and while this happens, Splice going to go just directly in towards A at this point. And in all honesty, they should be able to get it for free. Attacker's starting moving through connector. A couple guys are moving back in now, but they should be stuck behind the smoke setup. So unless they want to push that and take a risk, then uh, they're actually going to let Splice take control of the site for free because they took the risk on the mid push. I actually really like the way the Splice have played this, but. Can you see a little bit underneath that? Yes, he can. The CT smoke, smoke just not quite as crisp as you'd need. But those Tech Nines can still do damage, but it's down to just Jason now. 
now. I thought that was I thought that was a P90. <laughs> yeah. that I was like, what? But it's just down to Jason. 1v3, bomb planted. If anything, they've got what they wanted here. They've taken down two. They've got a bomb plant. They can't really contest it. And Jason going to back away. He's going to keep holding the armor and the tech nine. You might as well. I don't think there's anything else to be found here for him. But in the end, Tai Lu starting to just you know, get a bit of a scoreline going, a bit of a bank building. But for now, supplies can actually buy back in. And that's the important factor here. That was a good enough round to allow them a nicer buy, fuller buy. You've got the mollies. You've got a, you know, everyone can get a smoke in this. Jason can get what he wants. He's down 5k. So this is a much better position for supplies. Hopefully, they can come back in. But we're seeing the double orb, and that can be deadly. Captain Mo indeed chiming in with the op. And that was a very crucial factor for these guys in a lot of their matchups over the past couple of days. You have that in the arsenal of Tai Lu, and you all of a sudden have a much harder round to try and win against there. So they're still remaining very mobile here on Tai Lu's side of things at the beginning of the round, shifting their players out towards mid to watch for an aggressive push there, and now swapping them back around to more default positions to line up for an A hit. And whether or not Splice know they're coming up against Double Orb, we're just going to take a gamble on it. This is a very good approach. One, taking the site just renders them less effective. And if you get left in a 5v5 retake, the CP side is always going to struggle with two orbs to play back into this. So this could be a very good read. I'm not sure if they're fully aware of it, but they're going to get the site for free. And this retake's going to be hard. I think it was, was it Flipside who really struggled to really pull that through. So you can see the Tyloo completely locked out here. Perfect take from Splice. Now they just have to hold it. Arya spotting Captain Mo there and even firing some shots at him through the box, bringing him down a bit lower. It's going to force him to D-stack. Even DD picking up two kills for either side, bringing this into a four on four. And we can see Davey going for that long flank back around through T-spawn. But Fancy's first attempt to find a way back into the site is going to fail. Captain Mo picking up the second one, does take down Arya. Double smokes coming in for some reason, but Jason Arya just walks right past that, picks up a kill. Trade's still coming in for the CTs, and now DD moves in for the second one. All of Professor Chaos's hands, but he cannot hold. DD moves in and picks up three quick kills to retake that site for Tyloo. And actually, no, look, they're not going to have enough time to be able to defuse. And no, oh, looks like they just actually got that. Last second, last second. Then they do retain the double ops as well. Their money's looking pretty good on Mo. And DD, this is the player that I was talking about at the start. He excelled against Renegades before, and he's again having that performance. He generally sits up kind of by short, but his retakes on this map are absolutely sick. Look at this play already, 11 to three for him. And for Splice, I don't know why Jason just walked out through Palace then. He had the, a, a decent enough spot to play a crossfire on, maybe hoping to catch them transitioning from, you know, jungle and stairs to the site, but it kind of just assembled the crossfire they had in place. But still, into this round, Splice looking a little worse for wear now. They had that good buy coming into this one, at least the prior one, excuse me, now. Not so much so. Now Mo's keeping tabs on the skis. See where that smoke came from. Times it. What a oh. shot, Mo. Perfectly timed on that. Just counting down the seconds till the peak came through. And now you've unraveled what Splice were intending. They know that, okay, that's a deep connector smoke. They've probably got short control. You can already see the Tylo falling back towards that B site, ready for what's coming. Hey, you're going to come with that Molotov there, but able to get out of it pretty quickly. And to start off this round, we've already seen an amazingly timed shot coming out from Captain Mo here. Somebody trying to chain it into a second, but. Not going to be on the mark as much. Elsewhere on the map, though, Captain Mo has struck once again, taking down Davey. And now for Abe, although he's tried to make some progress here in the apartments, he's been unable to do so at this point. And Tai Lu, if they do decide to have the offensive coming into this B-bomb site, the issue would be is that there's already three players there ready to defend it. Thankfully, though, for Splice, they decided against this and are now shifting two with the three remaining back through underpass. Look at this from Jason R, however as he moves in really swiftly over towards Sandwich, getting a lot of control for free. This is going to be dangerous. But where's he going to take it? How can he help his teammates out here? That's perfect. Combining that with Aya taking down the one player in towards Ooh, window, that could have so much more potential. Sadly, it's all kind of fallen apart. They're over-pushed almost. They could have maybe held that down, worked the site a little more. Aya, there's still players alive. There's three players. And this is an incredibly brave plant. Aya, how the hell have you been allowed to do that? But you're not going to get away with this one, surely. Oh my god, he gets the first down, but... No more to be found. Somebody keeps it in check. And these rounds are pretty messy here at the moment, if I'm honest. So Jason had so much potential to do there. He had to do some real work there. But after that first initial exchange, him and I are doing really well, picking up the first two. It felt like they didn't even expect it themselves. and just kind of like, oh, God, what do we do now? I mean, there's good damage being done across the board. These are very close rounds. Yeah. Tai Lu, at this point in time, with the exception of maybe one or two players, have like a really bad economy being built up for them at the moment. If Splice, if Splice figure out how to close out these rounds, then they could be in really good shape really quickly here. It's just that's the big issue. They're not winning the clutches, and they're making a lot of mistakes when it comes down to the wire there. A lot of the same mistakes versus Envy as well, because they had some pretty close rounds versus them yesterday too, and the same mistakes were made. All right, Splice. They had such success doing this before. Davey didn't find his role when he played this sort of mid-rotate. So I'm hoping he finds a little bit more of something here. Again, they look like they're going for this, but look how close up Tyler have pushed here. Is Fancy going to be really trying to stop Jason? Jason caused an issue before, but already splice around. 
Look at this from Attacker, he's just in Sandwich, ripping them to shreds, finds three kills, eventually is traded out by Jason R, but that doesn't matter. In comes the touchdown, Nate, from DD. Davey, the last one alive, and well, he's kind of a non-issue as far as that A site is concerned. He was trying to lurk his way over towards the B site, as we mentioned previously, and now as he pushes in towards A, he doesn't have bomb control. A minute left on the clock. Tyloo have no reason to worry right now. Absolutely not. Bomb being where it is, DD can push up, cut off one of the approaches where actually Davey's coming from. Davey, sick adjustment from him. Okay, DD's gone. Now down to 2v1. He's got a minute to play with. Zero utility, and the bomb's in an awful position, but they both have orbs, so in theory he might be, might be able to find one. Find one clean 1v1, but that has to be pretty quick. He's using a decent amount of his time to rotate back over here through mid and readjust the angle he's going to be moving in from, but this could work. You look at somebody right now, he's not, he's no still, one's watching this. like he has an iron gaze over here towards, uh, over there towards the T-ramp, the but thankfully he's going to adjust it now. Maybe pushing his way in through connector, they still don't know he's here. And it's up to somebody to check things right around the corner. He looks to it now, but still misses. And now we're in a 1v1. 23 seconds up from the he clock. Davey still has a lot of time to play with here. But when it comes down to that final battle, Captain Moe is going to jump out from the ticket booth and take Davey down. That was so possible then for Davey as well. That became so perfect. The timing was just on his side. But Attacker being able to get away from... Being able to get away with that was unbelievable. You shouldn't be able to, have, able to do that at all. Not with the limited amounts of pressure coming in, but he had so much freedom. No one able to focus him down, and Davey in the end just didn't adjust well enough on that second shot, and the step out from Mo just catching him out, and that is again going to keep Splice so far down here, and I think we've got a timeout. I assume that's from Splice. Yep. Yep, it is, and that's completely warranted at this point. I don't blame them at all. And a lot of the discussions can be quite a tough one because they are having close rounds, so it, all, it, it becomes quite a hard point to discuss, you know what I mean? It's like, well, we're getting close, what's stopping us going further? What's stopping us closing out these rounds? And no one's been able to kind of find an answer for it yet, so hopefully they can come up with something now. I think the biggest issue from my observation on this one is too many risks are being taken by Splice once they're in a fairly secure position. They keep moving out, they keep trying to take these open 1v1s, and Tyloo are always winning them. At the moment, it just seems like they're more on point from an individual standpoint with their skill. And because of that one, they're constantly getting the edge on them, especially in post-plant scenarios there, like I mentioned before. Splice seemed very hit or miss with that one. Uh, bringing one example back, Jason R, when he got smoked at a palace like three or four rounds ago, just rushing out in. there. Gets a one front trade, granted, but because there's so few players left, it still doesn't end up really being a good thing because of his teammates holding positions where they really can't afford to peek back out, then those guys are kind of screwed for the rest of the round. When he was holding a fairly good spot, if he waited a few more seconds, waited for one of his teammates to maybe get in trouble, he could have peeked out and they probably wouldn't wouldn't have suspected him as all. So just the timing on these peaks and their overall aggressiveness, once they actually get the bomb on the ground, I feel like is their biggest enemy at the moment. Yeah, they do seem like uh, a lot of individuals rather than a team. You compare them to, like, let's say, Optic on their T side that's very well stretched on the XQ. Trades are perfect. We're not seeing that right now from Splice. They need to pull it back together here because 7-1 is a bit of a disastrous scoreline. It looks like they've gone for something different. A lot of mid control being exerted here from Splice, but the double stack towards short could really hamper that approach. Somebody pushing his way back out over here now to gain some extra ground. It might have a chance. Ooh, scratch that. Professor Chaos finds a headshot there. But DD, who's been probably one of the biggest players here so far, moving in. They give another kill on a Jason R. Looking for a second, but he is going to fall. However, the Molly that was left on the ground does enough damage to finish him off. And now we're back down to an even trade. Splice, though, still need to find their way onto the site. Where are they going to take this now? This is where you, you want kind of communication to kick in, leadership to kick in. You've got to have that plan, that goal as a team. Those last three players should have an advantage here on the T side to try and define it. You should be able to find a more advantageous fight, let's just say. So, Davey, Professor Chaos and Aya slowing the pace right down. They, they've, got, they've still got a minute to work with. They just need to find where they want to go here. Keep Tyler on their toes. At the moment, Captain Moe and Fancy both kind of posturing towards the B side. Attacker siloing out by A. You can play retakes on A pretty comfortably. They have enough utility to do as that. So, Professor Chaos looking for a way through here 30 seconds they, they need to be quite quick about this he could get oh this could be quite nice actually if he puts himself maybe by the murder hole i guess you could call it right back here he can stop the rotate coming towards a he could possibly fancy is fancy as well just looked away from that too to start exactly. watching archers so this could be great it's oh. open but <laughs> it could have been great it's all dead now davy yeah. gets shut down as he tries to push his way out of the apartment professor chaos will get the first kill for free but now he's also going to win one more, and he's going to follow up to retrieve the bomb too, so this is definitely working against him now. And not only this, but as you can see, Captain Moe in the back there, going to miss the shot. And Professor Chaos eventually will get taken down by Attacker, pushing out the market. Had a good lineup, but the two other executors coming in from Arches and the apartments did not have such good luck. Yeah. It, the theory wasn't bad, actually. Professor Chaos being allowed that much room to work was really good, actually. But then at the end, 
the shutdowns here were pretty sick from Mo. Just seeing the shoulder was enough. And then adjusted well towards short, as you said. So not not the best of things there for Splice, and that's going to put them down to the Tech Nines. This game is looking a little one-sided, and Tyloo's shown that they do have strength on anything other than Cash as well. They do have a little bit of a deeper map pool than maybe people would have expected if they hadn't have watched them in previous tournaments. And so now somebody's in such a good spot here. If that doesn't get checked and there's no need to clear it, he could run absolute rampage. And Fancy's going to be spraying. They've heard the steps. They see the smoke. They know what's coming. Somebody is waiting. The flashes come out. They're going for the window approach, which is good. But here we go. The UMP starts to tear him apart. And it's DD joining in. And well, with four players standing against the mere one of Davey, this is pretty much secured. Very well handled by those B players in Tyloo. Davey always finding himself in these awkward situations with Splice trying to go for these four man pushes. Never really seems to get a piece of the action until the very end when he's the last one left alive and, and there's not really much to do from that point forward. So it's still going to continue to be a dominating half from Tai Lu. 9 to 1. Still again finding a couple trades here and there as so you're forcing these big rebuys over towards the CT end of things and that's keeping the money quite low but Splice's inability to pick up even a single round here ever since they did that second round force up which ended up working brilliantly yeah. is uh, still leaving them in a position where they're just not able to crawl back. That's, we, we haven't seen much of an orb actually come out from Splice, so this could be a nice changer here for them. The Molly, Molly, oh, oh yeah, oh. what are you doing? The Molly on short just trickled over the edge. He didn't expect it. Now down to four. That might just remove any sort of impact that Aya can have. No brazen peaks are going to come out. He is working at such a disadvantage. Fancy has recovered the orb, peeking up towards ladder room. I think that's Abe up there right now, and Jason not too far away. They've got some mid control, but look how close. Tyloo are playing this. They're not going to give him much more than this. This is a real pinch. The splice are going to be in here. And somebody actually getting a little bit scared there because of the dark control that comes in. Oh! <laughs> somebody with the trick shots. Flip it around. Picks up one and does a 360 to find the second one. Nicely done by somebody. Holds the line. And now for Professor Chaos. He's going to push his way up. Try to turn this around to some degree. But... With that kind of style, it's going to be rough to do so. Davey and Professor Chaos do find two kills. Attacker trading it back out from within side of the connector, though, and DD chiming in as well. Leaves Arya as the last man alive with only four HP. Oh, not again. Oh, yeah. That would be. The best part is, too, is River is the one that gets brought down that low for yep. the Molly. <laughs> They've been such a perfect end to things for him. And actually, DD's found another Molly, so they might just keep doing this. Just lace the map with Mollies until Arya burns alive, but. Uh, Blinkers are off for Aya, going right back in. Six shot towards DD, but can he predict the attackers here? It's so low between them. 14 HP against four. One shot from either is going to do the... Oh, no, you just have to hit the shot. But flying off the ladder, attacker just comes back in with two. And do you know what? Tyloo are playing some, some crazy CS right now. Individually, these guys are nuts. And look at Aya. He just didn't expect that molly to trickle over the edge. And somebody... He had 17 bullets here. There was the first. 10 left, pretty much. Spins around. Oh, Get it wrecked. sucks to be spliced right now, if you're if you're being very honest. What an awkward round, though, and all this. You oh, think of roofing. everything that goes on there, and then at the very end, like, props to attacker for that kind of movement, and thinking about that, like, on the dot, too, to go up on the ladder and sort of do, like, a mini run boost because of the physics and the way the ladder works. Just leaping back out there, gets in the better position, catches Ari off guard, and he is able to win that final 1v1 there. So, Tyloo, again, like I said before, still things are very close. These are always coming down to 1v1s, but with it, you know, almost always going into the favor of Tai Lu in those situations, not a big issue at all. Why is Davey so far away in these rounds? I get it when he's trying to do a lurking roll. I, I kind of understand it, but nice. at the moment he's so far off. And okay, Abe's going to try and take the initiative here. It looks like almost Splice is, you know, back has been broken at this point. They're going for incredibly aggressive plays, incredibly, I guess, brazen moves. But Tai Lu now have the chance to retake. They still have a couple of smokes, a flash or two, but the angles are actually quite nice for Splice here. Having CT control is going to give them such a chance here. Aya does recover the AWP, so now it's going to be an even tougher task for Tyloo, but bullying their way back through is Didi and Attacker, bringing it down to a 3v2. The bomb, however, is planted well for Davey, and I questioned his positioning before. Now let's see if it comes off with any sort of goods. He does a great bit of work, but in the end it's Abe to close out the round, and Splice Gets a touch of a buffer, but it really isn't much by this point. Because they stacked up there too, Attacker ended up getting a team kill against yeah. his uh, against his teammate there. So, finally Splice back into it. Should note though, you don't hear the scream. Uh, would you be happy at two rounds? I mean, <laughs> Splice, uh, I think it was I think it was in one of the interviews the other day where they say, like, I mean, we take anything we can get and we, we try to build off of that. So, you'd feel like in this situation they'd be a little bit happier when they try at least build up some life on their own end, but it's not the case right now. They're going to start off this round pretty well. Very well, in fact, as Arya finds two kills. Looking for a third now, but he's going to get pressured. And Captain Mo does finally take him down. Where are the ramp players here? <laughs> just, just kind of left Arya to die at this point. And now they're going in one by one, which allows Fancy the chance to single out Abe. 
Captain Mo still above as well. I'm not sure if they're going to predict him so perfectly to be here. They know that I oh, saw another. And Jason's so aware of this. Davey's working around for it as well. He tried to find the 1v1 towards Jason. Didn't get the shot at it. And now he's down to attack in a 1v2. Comfortably dealt with by Jason. And Splice get their third on the board. So good stuff from Splice in the end at least. Deal with Tai Lu. I think uh, Aya predominantly just kind of uh, at the forefront of that. But this is still a very one-sided scoreline. They need the last few to kind of close this out with a bit of a chance going into the second half. Otherwise, Tai Lu can just grind this down. Hopefully for Splice, though, they start to resolve this. And with the money being so low for Tai Lu in this round, this could be another one definitely on the board here for Splice. Yeah, we kept mentioning that over the course of Tai Lu's winning streak. But just, again, bringing that back. Despite the fact they won nine rounds in a row, they didn't get to go for a single force up after they lost one to Splice. It was being kept extremely close. It was just Splice was never able to actually close out the rounds. But now, though, after that last round, we see Tyler going back into another buy for themselves here. It does include rifles for most players here. Fancy have to downgrade to an SMG and a scout on somebody. Fairly limited utility as well, but they're going to hold some aggressive positions in hopes of trying to turn the tide with that. I actually like this as well. Attacker kind of being anti-flash. Just waiting this one out. Fancy's going to be the one to get the info. Probably, ideally get one, but probably won't be able to trade, but then attacker should take over. They're so hesitant, Splice, and I can't blame them. I'm hoping someone pop flashes this, or at least tries to get around it. We'll see. We'll see what they go for here. Aya's taking a bit of a, a linger towards A, having a little look around. Nothing there on stairs. He's pretty getting curious as to why he's seeing nothing. No one close by, and that might actually give away a little bit of the game. And He does have the chance to clear out the dark corner if he wants to, but this is another slow round here. Aria still holding back. They're waiting for a mistake to be made by Tai Lu, but Tai Lu moving whatsoever. Extremely patient right now. But now Splice need to move in. Flashbang's gonna be tossed out, but they're not expecting anybody to be in this room here. Ape finds the first kill, and they are definitely not gonna see the second player. Attacker striking with a one-two punch, moves in. And Didi along with Attacker again, finding the final two frags. Tai Lu right back into the winning seat as they go up 11-3 now. Yeah, sick little stack towards Ramp. Uh, first time they've really done that as well. So catching Splice off guard and that slow play just being halted before it started really. 11 to 3 now, Tyloo back in some form of control. They do still have the scout on somebody, so far from ideal. But Splice have been doing relatively, or at least getting close rounds I guess on this. But um, the aggression is going to be met by some sheer force. Attacker and Fancy straight up mid. We go Fancy is right amongst them. 1, 2, 3. He spots out all of them adjust comfortably for the second. But Davy and Aya are not going down without a fight. Well, now down to a 2v2. We're going to see what that scout can do. Jason's got some room towards A, but Abe is all over at B. This seems so messy from Splice. And even Tai Lu going to be just right down the middle of them. So the guys from Tai Lu want to hold on to that bomb control there. Oh. Nicely done by Abe. Tapping away. Takes out Captain Mo. And all of a sudden, somebody's in a horrible position to try and win this out in 1v2. Nonetheless, though, keeps his own aggression going and moving out. Finds the last player, and it's going to be him that has a better headshot accuracy moving out. Takes down Jason, and with that, that'll end the half. 12 to 3 for Ty Lu. So, guys, we're going to take a very short break. When we're back, we'll be kicking off to see if Splice can come back from what is a bit of a condemning scoreline.
12 to 3 on the half here. Tyloo with a pretty strong lead thus far. Splice, however, clawing some rounds back. Oh, you're having a bit of a standout performance for them, but outside of that, it's been the DD show more than anything. But new half fresh start. Let's see if Splice can bring this one back closer. We have the jewelies coming out for Davy, and as said, what's better than one gun? Two. It will work out. It's sh just sheer logic. He did work with them as well when he was, he using was fine. The yeah. the I think he got like two or three kills with yeah. it. So. A bit unfortunate they don't actually win the round from that, as that would have been quite a bit of heroics. But Arya, in the meantime, is having himself a bit of a battle out here just inside of the window and no. tries to escape. But that's a mistake, as somebody will take down Arya just as he tries to get himself into a safer position on the site after being digged down very, very low. It'll be easy pickings when he goes for the cross. Right, looking at this position, DD now in such a great spot. Somebody. Keeping two players kept at B. Davies pushed up, though, which is good. So he's going to see there's nothing there. So that's hopefully enough of a sign that maybe Professor Kale should get over towards A. Because this slow build-up is beautifully constructed. But Abe's aim is pretty much on point there. Catching out Fancy. Pretty good bit of work. The two players now towards A. Going to take their route over Tetris. Over Sandwich. Attacker makes the dash towards the site. Bomb now being tried to be planted, at least. And no one's going to challenge here. It's a 4v4 retake. Splice. Need to get back into this. Attacker going to be hiding out inside of Sandwich. Davey coming in on a bit of a lurk here to try and take out some of these positions they're holding. Quick snap as well to find somebody down below, but oh, can't find that nice last Julius. bullet or two that is needed to be able to eliminate it. Captain Mo, what? Can't hold himself there. Abe's going to be able to crawl right in through the space they're taking out Captain Mo, but all of a sudden, Attacker's the last one left alive here. Abe's just going to walk right up to him, take him down, and splice. Take control of a second half pistol. What was that round? <laughs> so many missed shots. Like, the Tech 9 was ridiculous. Davey with the Jewelies, I guess, is forgivable. But then again, he chose to go with them, so maybe not. But, well, Abe had a good round, at least. Not sure about that Tech 9. I mean, like, like this is something <laughs> to consider now when these teams pull their next match. Because keep in mind, this is a, this is a lower this is a yeah, lower this pool match. this isn't a full qualification spot. So yeah. they're still going to have to play at least one more game to qualify, mm -hmm. depending on who wins. Both these teams are playing, like, incredibly scrappy right now. Tyloo is a huge lead, but it doesn't tell the full story. Going into their next match, they need to fix these consistency issues. Because if not, I feel like the next team they run into might just absolutely destroy them. Oh, absolutely. There's there's no choice to put it. Sure, that some of these rounds look okay from Tyloo or individually, but it is individuals. It's, it's a very scrappy match. It's not well-defined. And, well, we're going to see if that's going to kind of transpire any further. Already we're going to see the shotguns out. Davey, no stranger to that one, causing many a frustration. But a default A for Tyloo is going to be placed out. And surely Spice know how to deal with this one, because they have been doing it themselves for quite some time. Especially on those Tech 9s already, though. Somebody flies in. Mac 10 to the face of Arya. Professor Chaos locked out from this. Can't do much. He has to play carefully. Those smokes pluming in front of him, locked out completely. Left, right, center. Somebody's pushed up, but actually not getting caught by that bit of a spray there. So he'll be able to stay alive, even on 22 HP. Hunting back for now, just going to wait for the smokes to fade. Jason R moving in. Nice recovery, actually, as he's brought down low, just a 2 HP, and even finds a second kill now. Takes out Captain Mo. DD peeking from the firebox, though, is able to eliminate Jason R now, trying to hide, but the problem is they know exactly where he's at. But Abe can't find the bomb properly, so he's going to move in, trying to look for the kill. DD peeking back out, finds Abe, and then he finds a second one. Mr. Chaos did pick up one more, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day, as Tai Lu have struck him back. And they've got their lead going once again. <laughs> Man, this is one of those games. Now I know how Metas felt yesterday. This is. <laughs> oh, like this is this. a tough one. Yeah, it's, it's just the fact that it's so scrappy. Spice had such a good shout at that. You know, the retake, perfectly acceptable way of doing it, but. Man, this is, this is a tough one to keep keep tabs on, and a bit of an unfortunate one. I hope that people remember Splice for having much closer games than this, but good stack, or at least a, a lucky stack, you know, the right place, right time here. They're going to be getting all those uh, Mac 10s the P90, all coming at them, though. The P90 is the first to start tearing apart the Splice team. Three players alive, Jason and Abe. Okay, here we go. There's that bit of damage we wanted to see, but can't find anything else from it. And Davey will be removed. This is Tyler who's starting to look a little more dominant. The scoreline looking a little one-sided. And sadly, the money's just not good enough from Splice to really contest this round, so... Uh, Ooh. Okay. This is a weird choice, considering this how is... much Professor Chaos has. Professor Chaos only has $1,900, and they are forcing at the moment, which is going to leave him with the very minimal buy, as you can see already. He gets himself a CZ and some, uh, some, like, some utility one up behind it, and Abe has a pretty similar story, but now that you have an XM on Davey, Jason working with Infamous and Ari with the op. So this is an all-in attempt from Splice. And the sad part being, Abe 
is one who's got to deal with the vast majority of this T side, and he only has that 5-7, a smoke and a flash. If he flashes over the top here, perfectly fine. Gonna cut off the guys from map, but there's still one coming down Palace. That catches two. That's perfectly fine. But now they're completely unblinded, and they can take the fight. But actually walking right into him. Apes are doing good deals of damage, but where's the support? Where's the backup? They're watching the cross. The nade will eventually deal with A, but it's Arya, the man at the start, who had the orb, who had the firepower, has to be the one to step to the plate. Two more players left alive for Tyloo. A UMP and an AK, not much to work with. But still far more than Davy and Professor Chaos. Speaking of Davy, he's on the flank right now, working his way into the site, and he could impact, but he actually goes for the long range shots and against it Captain Mo, and it works, and it's a headshot as well. What do you know about that? Takes down Captain Mo, and for somebody, he's got nowhere to move, so Arya is going to pick up a final op shot there to take him down. Splice somehow made that buy work. Davy is like the ultimate troll in this game, and he's so happy about it in interviews, which is the best part. He was, he was. Uh, I, the thing is that those shotguns work in a horribly weird way. They work, so you can't really doubt him too much when you're like, oh, why is he doing it again? But it, it actually did help that round, which is kind of terrifying. But it keeps it just before breaking point. Now, 14 to five. Splice needs to just go on a complete tear, build up every bit of money they can. Never let Tyloo back into this. It's a long road if they even consider it. And already Mo's looking towards B, and it's going to be Professor Chaos to deal with what could be five players pouring his way, and that's the first shot to give away a bit of the plan. He, uh, he was doing some work with the XM the other day, too. I yep. think when they were playing on Cobblestone. He was. Pittman, a nice joke. He means Reaper, clearly, in Overwatch. Fairly apparent. <sighs> anyway, the guys from Splice <laughs> are going to be backing away from the apartments for now. Working their way back over here to take some mid-control. Captain Mo starting that one off, and support players just lining up for a default A hit would appear. Nicely done for okay. Captain Mo, though. Okay. Finds a nice shot on the Aria. And with that, Tai Lu have the man advantage once again. They get that mid control they've been looking for. And now they can absolutely go for this A hit. Abe again. Has to deal with so many. One flash on Molly. Where's he going to decide to play this, actually? If he sits there, he's kind of at the, the beck and call of the rest of Tai Lu. He can take some advantage, though, by getting himself in towards Palace. So clears that out, sees nothing. If he hears a step, a smoke, a flash, he knows where they're coming from. This should be a good retake from Splice. They don't have to take any initial fights here, in theory. But that mid-split could start causing some issues. Abe is very much isolated. Let's see if he can get info. Not overextend. He knows one's by Tetris. There's probably one on the site. He takes the fight there. That's him doing some good work. There's DD gone. Bomb now loose on the site. They don't need to overextend. They need to just find out where these last two players are. And Fancy with the TD finds an angle, but not the shot to make the most of it. And now 4v1. Captain Mo should not have room to work here. Stuck in the connector, trying to find a way out of it. He may be... No, no, he won't. So let's say he may be able to pick up that shot at the very least on the Jason R, but Jason R still holds strong, and Splice themselves are keeping them in this game off of a forced buy just a few rounds back. They've managed to prevent Tai Lu from getting up to match point. And now they brought their economy down onto its knees as well. Gonna have to go for a save here. And this should be an easy round for themselves. They're bringing up to 7-14. Still a very long climb to go, though, before they are tied back in this game. It, 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 I don't know what's with some of these teams at the moment, but it's such defining halves. You see such strong half scores and then just kind of crumbling a little on the second, no closing on it, but a very swift play. Now Jason Gilly trying to be outdone here, overwhelmed. He actually is overwhelmed in the end. DD's going to get it, but while that happens, the rest pick up the slack. Aya, Abe, and now Davey claiming the kills with Tyloo. Somebody. God, Davey, what is going on? Get a shotgun instead, baby. But there you go. Arya has been pretty much becoming a bit of a rock here for Splice. I've got to say it. He's been playing a very pivotal role. He may not be the, you know, the, the biggest fragger, but you can see how much impact he's having in these important rounds. And I think we've actually got a double orc finally for Splice. Again, a risky investment, but at this point, you kind of have to keep going back into this. There's, there's very little buffer room for them to kind of go back and reset. So it's all or nothing for these boys. And on the other side, well, Tyler have been able to cobble together a good enough buy to come back into this and look a little bit dangerous. On the other side of things, though, we haven't really seen all that much from Davey, who's, of course, been the, the more consistent player for this matchup, but we can talk more about that a little bit later on here as the action's getting started. An attacker has already picked up the first kill on towards Aria. Jason R looking for one, but a little bit late on the flick. It's not going to connect. Now he's going to be smoked off as well, but the players from Tyloo is rushing in, and Jason R can't find any of these shots. However, at the same time, Davey and Aim are holding quite oh, nicely, and there's Jason R taking down Captain Mo. It's all into the hands of Attacker now. He's got no room to work with. Walking with a knife in hand. That's not going to work out so well. Davey taking him down. It's going to be eight now for Splice. Explosive round from Tyloo then, but... Met with complete and utter just brilliance from Jason. That second shot pretty much dissembled everything they were going for here. So 14 to 8, Splice 
building back into this game. They, they actually have a shot of this, and look at that shot from Jason. Just brilliant stuff. And it's going to force Tylee back down again. This is the thing. They are being worked down here. They are being worked out. We saw Tylee struggling on their T-side against Cloud9 to some degree. It wasn't that pretty, to be fair, for them. So they need to be careful here to not let it slip again, but an all-in B-play going to come out. Professor Chaos pretty blinded here, actually forced back, but there's the support coming in. Davey finally having an appearance in this half, and there's Professor Chaos making his mark into this round. So Chaos okay, looking for some more pickups there too. Strike back a little bit here, but this is being done detached from some of the action, and as soon as he rounds the corner there to get himself towards Catwalk, he's a dead man, as will the attacker when he tries to move out onto the site. So the guys from Splice holding on for right now, keeping it going pretty consistently here too, and easily the money is built up to a point now where they're not going to have to worry really about that last round should we see Tai Lu finally strike back, but it's them now. They need to find a way back into this one, as Splice are making this comeback somewhat plausible. It seems a little disjointed from Tyler. It just seems rushed, like they just want to finish it. It's, just, it's been the T-sides. Like, it's it's not even it's just in this match. It's been every single match so far. They're T-sides. have had so many issues with it. In the Cloud9 match yesterday, yep. in the G2 match the other day, they were they were forcing uh, consistently there, and that caused so many problems for them. So I don't know what it is. It just needs a lot of work, it seems, on their T-side. And it doesn't really seem to be a single issue with cash as well as this is happening on Mirage. And it's kind of weird because their CT-sides seem to have every sort of... Um I guess fundamental that you want on a T side, you're well constructed, aggression here and there, lovely trading off the back of it, good map control built up. If they apply to that to the T side, they might actually start closing out these games a little bit swifter, but at the moment, different different approach. Sitting back a little passively, seeing if there's any aggression through mid, taking their time. It looks like somebody's testing the waters by B. They haven't done a really big fall by hit towards B, which is actually pretty difficult to pull off. But again, with those double ops into practice, sight hits aren't bad. So I think somebody's going to be doing the smoke towards connector. And just drops in, maybe allowing Didi and Fancy to play a little bit more out towards mid, which is exactly what's going to go on here. And just drops in. So now Didi and Fancy don't have to worry about connecting, but they can focus towards short and hopefully keep eyes on Davey, who can still be a threat here, but that smoke perfectly in place. These are highly stratted out rounds. It's going to open up an opportunity, and there's the first shot. It's Didi towards Chaos, but now Davey responds in kind. With that now, Davey popping back out. That's where the smokes bite back. So you're not able to check inside of those areas. Fancy picking up another one here for Ty Lu now. Bringing things down to a three versus three. Already, I believe, spotted a player pushing for marches. So Davey's going to try to move out and take them down. But he can't really see all that much. He knows somebody is there somewhere behind the bench area. And he gets some damage off on him, but it's not enough to take him down. Abe, though, gets you some good timing against the attacker. And Davey finding another peak takes down somebody. So it's all on Fancy. And he's not going to be able to pick up a single one of those kills. Arya moves in. There's the hype. As Splice will find yet another one, and I believe they'll be in the double digits now, and this will prop the pause from Tai Lu. Yeah, and completely warranted as well at this point. Splice starting to feel a little bit hotter in this one. And that was a really well-constructed round from Tai Lu. Again, those kind of like dry run strats that can work out quite nicely. Where, you know, they had everything built up. A 3-2 split towards B, three players, or I think it might have been... No, it was three players towards mid in the end, coming through, but it was Davey. Even though the smoke was in place, you don't expect a, you know, a player to be able to still find room there. No one had control of it. So, again, Tyloo theoretically having brilliant avenues of attack towards these sites, but those retakes just really coming through from Splice here. And we're seeing a, a bit of a closer game than I expected now. 14 to 10 after the score, what it was on the half. Tyloo really need to learn how to just close out these games. Now, if you remember from yesterday, one of the bigger issues for Tai Lu when they actually started losing to C9 was the fact that they couldn't use a pause because they'd use it at a very odd time in the first half after they won a round, ironically enough. One of their players that had an op ended up going down and they called the pause right at the beginning but they ended up swinging a comeback there which made it kind of awkwardly timed and yep. somewhat useless depending on what they needed to talk about during the pause. So this time at the very least they're going to get to use the pause when they're struggling on T side but the same issues once again resurfacing here as they have already been against both G2 and Cloud9 and some of their other matches previously. And even just talking about individuals here, a player's name that I don't often get to say, normally it is the Davey show to some degree, has been Abe. He's been an absolute rocket Abe, playing by dark, playing up above. He's been having a wonderful game and he might be tested again in this. Jason certainly being able to support him as well. Orp just down by CT, so Abe this time not being quite by dark, playing a little closer by the ninja spot. Just trying to use those boxes as, you know, basically play to kind of fall back from. And they seem very cautious of Connector. Of course, it's the biggest weakness of that spot. You can just be split through mid, but that's not the case. They're going to see these smokes coming in. I wonder if it's going to be a delayed hit from, from uh, Tyloo, excuse me. No, but it's going to allow the Mollys to go down, so they can't quite make the play. 
It's going to allow a rotate. Fancy's already out, though, and there's Abe waiting. He's given away his position, but still, with so few players actually out, no one can punish him. He can find room to work here. This is brilliant, and the support is absolutely perfect. And one by one, Tyloo walk in, and one by one, they get slapped around by Splice. And this is a clean round from them, and a very well-handled round by Splice here. Captain Mo left in that situation that we saw Davian quite a bit in the first half there as he tried to line up a late flank once they actually got control of the A site. But the problem is, first part of the plan never actually happened. So Captain Mo is now left alone. The bomb is sitting on the A bomb. So he's got a one on five. And essentially zero damage has been done to anybody on Splice. So it's not even like he has precedent to move in and try to pick off one or two of the low players since there aren't really any. He's going to be hiding back in the B halls and I believe he's going to try to save. Hopefully so for him. Could be a team ace if Ayo finds it. Very unlikely that he will. Doubt Ayo's could be the one to go hunting if anyone. Um, but yeah, more brilliant stuff from Spice then. But I think there's was, there was enough fault you could find with Ty Lu in that round as well. Their play, again, it seems theoretically really nice. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a default A pretty much, that's cool. But then going out one by one, every single player from Spice being able to find an angle to watch. No good trading, no one really focusing together, no one clearing out spots. Kind of a little worrying here for Tyloo, because it looks, it does genuinely look like they've hit a bit of a brick wall, and some of that, is it seven rounds in a row now, or six? It, well, it will be seven soon. So Splice really very much on the comeback trail, and oh my word. Oh yeah, you're gonna get it. No, it was chaos. Safe. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> There's the hype, 14 to 11. We've got a game on our hands, finally. And this would be absolutely devastating to any Tyloo fan to see, after getting to such a good point. But what a moment for Splice to build back in. That really does just, just show so much resilience to them crumbling under pressure. And there comes out the force again. These Mac 10s and Tech 9s. You've got three rifles, I guess, but so much real limitation here. Keep in mind, though, that Ty Lu, if they get their stuff together, are at 14 rounds. And this, this game could still end a moment's believe. notice very quickly. Just keeping it there, <laughs> keeping that no thought way, in the back of people's minds. Like, no the comeback is it. on its way, it definitely is, but <laughs> it can also be broken and destroyed at many times. No people have gotten used to these comebacks oh God, now with uh, liquid oh. matches, but... God, are you? This could be awful. He's gonna be moving in, but he gets that first shot! Nicely done on Attacker, now he's gonna fall back, though, he even finds a second kill! So that's a great play from him! It's a one for two trade, and Nade going in, holds back! Some of the members of Tai Lu for the time being and allows Splice to hold positions. The bomb's gonna be tossed back by somebody. He wants to move forward here. He wants to try and get some momentum so they can pick up another frag, but now they've been stunned. They've got no safe way out onto the site now. What a great play from Aya. He shouldn't have been able to get two from that. One was impressive. Fancy, though. Just catch up, Professor Chaos sees where that trace of fire was coming from. And now Davey has to be the big bastion player on this site, pretty much holding it down. One to the left, one to the right. He doesn't get either. Somebody finds him, and now we're 2v2. Somebody gonna try and get some control towards Kitchen. Jason, Whoa. how have you not heard that? And how did that shot not hit? Somebody land the shot. Fancy does, and now we're in a 1v2. Abe had been a huge impact player towards A. He needs to find that brilliance on B. Molly out, flash out, it doesn't matter. Somebody watches the cross, and it's Ty Lu to make it to 15 to 11. And what a heartbreaking moment for Splice, but they do have the money. They can still buy back into this. What did I just say? I know, I know. <laughs> there you go, another match point. This is the ultimate issue of letting your opponents, of course, getting such a huge lead. Especially with them starting off so well, too. But that was that could almost have been disastrous, too, with that yeah. missed off shot. He literally was not moving. Uh, but anyway, going back to the point, Tyloo already established the precedent for lead. And now, again, despite this miraculous comeback from Splice, are within one round of closing it out. But in this one, Professor Chaos is going to start things off well for Splice. Moving in, takes down Fancy. All of a sudden, that pressure coming from mid, they're going to be ready for it here. Jason Art, surprised though by Attacker, leaping through, but he's going to be pretty low. 20 HP, still though, is able to move in and smoke things off. Professor Chaos had spotted him, but Professor Chaos, you're running through that Molotov. 20 HP, what have you just done to yourself? And what, what is this round? Attacker, what did you just do? That was your own Molly. Molly makes you do strange things. All right, Blue. Apparently, he got too much in the end for attacker. <laughs> oh, hello, oh, Davey. Very casual hello. one tap from him. That was nice. All right, DD. 1v4. Your teammates have burned themselves alive. You've fallen apart. You had to scrape together that final <laughs> round to get you to 15. How much can you achieve here? Davey on the long flank. I are getting to CT. This should be pretty much set in stone. And they are not pushing forward to this. They're going to give him as much from as they feel is appropriate. But Didi might be able to find a 1v1 towards Professor Chaos, which could open his back up, but no. Professor Chaos quicker on the trigger, and Splice back in control to some degree. We're not done yet, folks. Splice still battling back from the brink, and with that trade of rounds, again, resets the T-side losing bonus. 
Jesus. And this is a nice shot from Davy as well. But anyway, back to the point. Tyler broke. They're not buying anything in this round. DD picks up the CZ investment, but that's it. It's P250s and a Glock on attacker for the rest of the team. And uh, you got the fit. Like in the back of my mind, this is the round that Splice will lose somehow. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those. They've one for one traded so far, but uh, I don't think the gun's recoverable yet, so not too bad. A still being so solid in A at the moment. Somebody's going around to get the bomb, but it's DD and Fancy trying to work something out in mid. And I'm hoping that no one overextends here for Splice. They need to be playing this relatively careful. As much as you know you're against a, a pretty much eco outside, you can't afford to be making half-handed mistakes. And Abe can't see above that smoke. I think it's landed too high up. He might be able to find a little bit of a corner. It's a cat. There we go. You can see cat. He needs to be careful. Nice angle there towards Fancy. Probably going to assume there's another for the boost, but DD appropriately waiting much closer by. So again, a bit of a... Awkward duel here might go down depending on what, who sees what first. And it was Abe, so good good control there towards DD. And now somebody left alive. Good bump, not going to get to plant it. There we go. <laughs> Splice. The dream is still alive here, but the money for Tyloo is not good either in this round. 3k, 4.1, they can buy it. Ooh, okay, they're going for the CZ's Tech 9s. Will this be their default A possibly, looking for that plant? We'll have to wait and see. Molly's there with Captain Mo. This could be overtime. This this very likely could be overtime, assuming that, you know, Splice don't make too many mistakes into this one. And it is going to be that default A that we've seen, which has gone quite close a few times, but Abe generally dealt with it well, and Jason supporting, quick rotates. It all worked out for Splice, but now they need to keep their cool on some of the most pressured rounds they're going to see. Tyloo lining up for a quick play into the A bomb site after utility is used to work their way in. Davy and Ari as well, going for some aggressive movement. They're going to know that this is going to be an A hit, because look at how much intel they're getting. Ari specifically sees there's nothing in the back B hallway. But now, players from Tyloo come flooding into the bomb site. Abe trying to hold things from the CT side of Firebox. Good damage is done from the back, but it's Professor Chaos that finds the first go back into the smoke and finds a second one. Fancy striking back from Professor Chaos again with another op shot, taking down Attacker. One more going down, it's all in oh, somebody. Oh, Professor oh. Chaos with a 4K on the op destroys that push. Splice, one round away for taking this into overtime. This could be a very long day we're in for, and I'm gonna be pleased if this is the caliber of game we're starting to see. Suddenly, we're seeing a little bit better from both sides, pushing each other to their limits here, and Professor Chaos, what a round indeed. Finally closing out towards somebody. All right, your last chance, Tyloo, to close out in regular time. Splice, one more round to hold on to. A full buy, though, will be coming in for Tyloo. They're well enough set. Sadly, no warp there, but enough to work with. What are their options now? The default A's have not been working. That B take was pretty close though, so maybe gonna posture towards that again, but are you this time not gonna overextend? Not gonna go walking into the lion's den, or maybe the dragon's den, should I say, at this point, and Davey's still there. So, pressure times for both of these teams. Aria back in the spot on top of the van, waiting for the push to come in from the guys over here on Tai Lu, but not going to be finding any of it just as of yet. Tyloo want to prepare themselves. They're sitting back, taking their time, not even really moving out to gather all that much info. Fancy and DD just now starting to push their way over towards top mid. But still nothing to be found as of yet as they do hold back and wait to line up positions to push in a little bit later on in the round here. 55 seconds. Mid split coming through. This could be the B play again, not quite the same though. Jason smoked out, Tylo backing over towards B. They've really not caused any struggle though for Aya or Davey just yet. Smoke goes in, gonna buy a couple of seconds here. They're just gonna go through it. A bit dangerous to go for that sort of stuff, but a pop flash is being lined up from somebody. This could cause Aya some struggles here. Jumps right into it, doesn't get blinded, and there we go. Aya gonna kick things off with a bang. Gets the molly down, stops the push towards him, forces them towards the window. But Davey's not watching it. Somebody's actually been allowed out on site. And Davey's overwhelmed. Somebody lands it, but Aya still fighting strong, but it's fancy. Now coming back in with one. Professor Chaos misses the shot. We're down to a 2v2, but look at that bomb. Far from ideal, but now recovered by DD. Jason R is going to back up. Doesn't want to take the risk on losing it and bringing things down to a one-on-one -on -one in the hands of Abe. Look at this flank coming in from Abe, though. Nobody's watching it, but he misses his first shot. That gives him away. Jason R, though, strikes first outside of the market into DD's hands now. But DD finding one pickup. He could end it right here. Abe's starting to push his way back in now around the corner with Didi looking all sorts of directions. He keeps himself safe now, working his way behind the bench. But as Abe presses forward, he's going to get some damage. It's not a whole lot, but as he moves forward, there's going to be the grenade. It doesn't connect anymore. It's the flank, so Didi closes it out. Ty Lu just barely escaped with this matchup. 16-14, they stay alive. And for Splice, such a valiant attempt at a comeback. But it won't happen here. They're going home.
DD just had a huge impact playing to their round, seeing the smallest bit of information and dragging it through. But this was a close game, as you said. And for Splice, what a performance on the comeback there. Resilient as ever, but sadly, just Tai Lu grinding out that last final round. My word, that has got to be heartbreaking for them. Uh, Splice, though, some individual talent really started to shine through for those guys. Professor Chaos having a great game. Abe, big game. Davey here and there having moments. It was everyone starting to actually come together there. But you've got to say, there's a lot of issues there with Tai Lu that will be indeed pressured into those later games. You said it, this game was scrappy at the best of times. If they don't pull themselves together here, especially on that T side, they will be absolutely destroyed in those games coming up. Yep, Splice is bringing a Herculean effort to try and round that comeback. Unfortunately, though, it harks back to the fact that they have such a huge lead coming off of the first half, and they reestablish it too right from the beginning of the second half, that unfortunately they just don't have enough leeway rounds to work with there to be able to uh, bring themselves back to the game and eventually win it out. So a bit unfortunate the first half flatlined a bit. They do show some great stuff in the second half, but overall from Tai Lu, while this is a victory, it's a cautious one because now going into that next match, they're going to have to try and fix these issues that have been showing for the past couple of days now very quickly. Otherwise, they could still be knocked out of this event in the final stage. And the thing is that they're so fundamentally brilliant on the CT side. T side does look scary. So they need to just, as you said, go back, fix it however much they can in whatever time they have. The day is not over for them. If anything, it's going to get harder now. These are the kind of last couple of goes for these teams. So you're going to see the very best they can bring. And Splice showing that they do deserve their place in these qualifiers. They do bring incredible games. However, I think that's enough from us. Let's head down to the stage with Mitch and Ty Lu. Thank you very much, Lauren and Blue. What an incredible ending to a very exciting match. I'm here again with Marshall, and this time we're joined by DD, of course, who's just shown huge growth over the course of this tournament. So congratulations to you guys here as well. I do want to ask you, um, how do you think your team has grown or evolved through this tournament now, getting to play up against these different teams and now being one game away from the major? Shanghai 我们还需要跟其他对手。So uh, when we, we have faced uh, G2 and Cloud9 in the past two days, and they, are like, they have different styles, and we actually learn many things from them. And in the game, we actually improve our communications and also the counter picks and uh, our aiming, actually. Yeah. Definitely great to see how you have developed on your strategic side as well. We talked about cash and how you guys have looked better and better every single time you've played it, now obviously having to go to Mirage. I do want to ask one more question as well. You guys as well, being in China, it's hard to play frequently against teams of, of international origin. Obviously, it's not possible at this time. A lot of teams use that as an excuse, actually, for not sort of being that good or, or good enough for not being able to compete. But you guys have thrown that out the window. You come here and you show that you're amongst the best teams in the world, even if you can't always play them. Is it hard, though, to, to improve uh, at your, in your own way when you don't get to play those games against these teams? 就我们平时在国内或者亚洲可能遇不到可以给我们那么多压力的队伍那就是我们来参加这种比赛但是我们很想感觉就对于欧洲人来感觉我们是没有说胆怯的那你觉得就是我们平时这样子的训练的时候我
But I mean, it's great how you guys soak up the information as well, and you, you see stuff like that, you recognize it, and you can adapt to it, and that's the whole reason why you're here. Thank you so much for joining us on the stage. I hope this isn't the last time, guys, so good luck in your next game. But let's pass over the desk now as well. The dragons have slain the snakes. Alex, why don't you take us into a bit of analysis? Cheers, Mitch. Indeed, I mean, at the desk, we did say that it was going to be an easy one for the dragons. It turns out the snake, the snake, the snake still had some venom left. Nearly got there in the end. We still have Vendetta job, and Matthew hanging out. It was nearly there. You know, it was 50% of a 50% of a, re a reception. But uh, what I want to talk about now, though, guys, is just how the Tyloo T side still blows our mind today. That looked like a open and shut case coming into the second half. And we just had to sit there, pull our hair out, watching the Chinese side struggle to close anything out. It's, they're just making the city's job too easy. I mean, there's no effectively any, any body system going on, so the, this is just, the players are way too long, so that means that you're not going to be able to trade effectively. So always when a single CT can make two plus frags in a single instance, it's just, yeah, it's not going to work at the T side. But I mean, they're ex well, not excuse, I'm going to put air quotes in that one. Their excuse there on the stage with Mitch was that their opponents in China play differently. And th that's understandable because, well, but it goes both ways, right? Because Tai Lu play different on their CD side, which is odd for a lot of other teams to play versus who are not used to playing, I guess, I guess what we could, I guess we could describe as a Chinese playing style. Sure. So it goes both ways. Uh, and I guess that's why we're seeing Tai Lu being more efficient on their CD side. But you need to be able to adapt to it better and quicker uh, as you meet progressively better teams. Otherwise, you're not going to have a shot at, you know, playing in Cologne in a month. Okay, so you're both fluent in Mandarin or, or Cantonese, you know, both of them Obviously. perhaps. Uh, what, would you be, what would you be saying if you had 10 minutes with Tai Lu? 10 minutes with Tai Lu, um, pretty much, well, <laughs> trade more? easy thing. Well, yeah, pretty much trade more, play less disjointed than what you're doing right now. Because we saw at times they had 2B executions uh, towards the end of the game that were actually fairly okay uh, executed. Sure, you can talk about what went wrong in the after plan because you know people are not really covering each other, or they have they don't seem to have the communication on point to actually know what the the people are remaining are actually doing. Yeah. But the execution in it itself was uh, was pretty alright, and that's what they didn't have for the most of their eight takes. So it, we see that it's possible. So they just need to work out their problems, and that's something that can be solved fairly quickly. What about you, Coach Natsu? What are you saying in your um, perfect yeah, Chinese? It, yeah, it would be easy just to sell them to go watch uh, Go TV demos of these matches from their opponent's point of view. Once they're doing their attacks, when they're doing the executes, when they're pushing a bomb site, you know, just you know, see, see from their behind. exactly, just see from their point of view how easy it is for the individuals to make huge impacts. Attacker in particular, two instances where <laughs> I had no idea what was going on, jumping from balcony into T ramp on. I, I don't understand that one. Jumping into his own Molotov. At times, as Lauren did say, though, Molly does make you do funny things. Anyway, we are going to be taking a break. That's just our first game of nine today. Yes, indeed. So much more CS is coming up right after our break. After the break, in fact, we have the Australians versus Dignitas. Again, a game of survival. And a third team now chopped out of the qualifier. Both the CIS minor teams, Empire and Fluffy Gangsters. And now we wave goodbye to Splice. Three gone and more to follow. In fact, the fourth will be on the list after this. See you soon.